seated upon the throne. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, do it again. Oh, do it again in our lives. Open my eyes to see Jesus. Oh, seated upon the throne. Take absolute control. Use me as a vessel today. I surrender myself unto you. Father, anything that will serve as the hindrance or a stumbling block that your word will not flow from your throne today, let it begin to depart at this minute. Let your spirit come to us now. Teach us now. Open unto us the revelation of the message you have given us today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 The lesson test for today is lesson 34, which is mental health, what every Christian should know. Lesson 34, mental health, what every Christian should know. The lesson test is taken from Proverbs 17, verse 22. I read Proverbs 17 verse 22. He said, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Amen? Then the memory verse is taken from the book of John verse, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2, which said, He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. Amen? Mental health, what the church, what every Christian should know. While all medical, while all medical and mental illnesses can be caused directly or indirectly, by demonic activities. Not all illnesses are due to demonic activities, including mental illnesses. So what does that mean? Mental illnesses are mental illnesses. It could be due to demonic activities, directly or indirectly. Ordinary illnesses could also exist on their own. And that was why Jesus Christ made it clear, even while he was healing around. When it was demonic, he spoke the demonic word. He spoke the word to that demonic that possessed those people. And he instructed, depart. And in fact, he departed. When it was due to regular illness, he said, you are healed. Amen. That he did by laying of his hands. So if you look at Luke 4, verse 40. He said, at the sun set, he said the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sicknesses and laying his hands on each one he healed them. Blaine. Nothing was attributed to demons in this place. Amen. Then if you also go to the book of Acts 5, sorry, Mark 5 verse 8. He talked about the legion of demons. That was why Jesus Christ specifically looked at him and said, depart. Set this man free. And that's what he did. Then the later part of that Mark 5, we also understand what they talked about, the issue, the woman with the issue of blood. The specific phrase I want us to understand there was that the Bible also specifically mentioned doctors. He said the woman has suffered in the hands of doctors and she has spent a lot. So as Christians, the reason why this lesson is being taken today is for us to really understand 
that this does appear and coexist among the Christians and believers. And the church wants every Christian to be aware of it, that it does exist. The simple fact that, oh, I'm a Christian, this is not my portion, that's not my portion, doesn't exist here. By the time we go into the Bible, we will see people in the Bible, verses upon verses, that we've referred to for some other reasons, now being used to kind of mirror what depression is. Amen? Amen. So the church really wants us to really understand that this does exist. I know in some cultures, there's a social stigma attached to it, and that is why people kind of shy away from it. So as we go deep into this class, we will see exactly what it is. So the lesson introduction talked about, he said, the, it, he said God's desire is for us to be well in our spirit, soul, and body. The simple reason why God wants us to be well in our soul, spirit, and body is that a sick mind is a sick individual. So it's God's desire for us to be well. That's his primary desire. Amen? But that does not exclude the fact that some of these illnesses could exist among brethren. Amen? Amen. So we also know that even in the New Testament, the apostles did talk about, he said, if any of you is sick, he said, call the elders of the church so that they will lay hands on them, anoint them, that they may be healed. But again, in the later part of that, in the later part of that verse, he said, if any of them has sinned, let them confess their sins. So if he said, if any of them has sinned, let them confess their sin, it means it will also happen among sinners and among believers. So let's take a dive into this um, topic. So he said the health of a human soul, which include the mind, the brain, function, intellectual and emotions, to a large extent determines the well-being of an individual. So now, Let's, let's go back and see what pro, this proverb um, 17 verse 22 talked about. He said, a merry heart does good like medicine, and a broken spirit cries what? The bone. A merry, cheerful, and a happy heart acting like good medicine, making a life meaningful with good mental faculty. While a broken or a moody spirit dries up the bone, Sap up one strength which can result in a sickness or imbalance mental state of a man. So now let's go to the individual mental state. So this individual under this individual mental state, the first thing that comes in there is experience. So under experience, you begin to highlight, talk about situations where you talk about proud life experience, proud life experiences, and cultural experiences. When you talk about prior life experiences, it means what you have undergone before, what you have experienced before, might contribute to shape your mental status. Example of this is, you can talk about your job. You can talk about the Marines. These are human beings who have gone to fight war. They came back from war, they were a changed human being. This we call, this is, um, the doctors will call post-traumatic stress disorder. This was human being who was perfectly normal. Went to war, came back, he was never the same. Wake up at night, relieving that moment of war, of hunting human beings like himself. Is it true that some of these individuals have some pre predisposing genetic condition? Absolutely. But there are so many who don't. Statistics shows that 2.2% of the normal population has PTSD. But among the Afghan, the um, Marines that went to Afghanistan, and Iraq is like 11 to 20 percent. So what happened? So it was that job that transformed their mental state to become who they are. So we're talking about people who are brought up from broken homes, broken families, divorced families. These are usually the kids that grow up to have difficulty interacting with people. Interacting with, with, with people. So you now see that clinic cultural experiences strongly influence your belief system, what you have been indoctrinated with, even in some religions. We see so many people go into some, some churches and religion and begin to assume that the father, the mother that he or she has lived with for over the years is a witch or wizard. 
because the church because their doctrine has kind of explained it to the fact that your enemy is from within I know of somebody who probably went this joined the church and the next thing is that the father and the mother became very suspicious of the parents so that's ideology and indoctrination then you're not talking about so many people who have undergone sexual abuses domestic violence they are never the same mentally so these are all situations where your prior experiences will shape the way you reason amen amen so in this case some of our experiences that we've lived before will also help us out I'm talking about sickness somebody who's been sick for a long time poverty famine difficulty unemployment these are things that you begin to relive, live on and think about that will shape in the way you think, the way you reason, and your mental state, and the way you interact with people. Talking about immigration also. There are so many people who wake up every morning, doesn't know what will happen in the next minute. How is he going to plan for tomorrow? These are all proud life experiences that will shape in your destiny. Amen. That was shaping the way you reason and in such a way will also affect you. We're talking about school, people that go to school also. Bullying. We've had so many kids who like, they were extremely good kids, went to school, being bullied and their way of life changed, never became the same. Their mental state, their reasoning, being able to fit into the society became a problem. Became a problem. So the next one, is, it said the proud life and cultural experiences including strongly enforced belief system, shared information, teaching, can shape individual's mental status. So let's read from Psalm 115, verse 4 to 8. So that we'll see how this um, belief system, shared information, indoctrination, has altered the way people behave. Psalm 115, verse 4 to 8. I'll basically read, um, just, just go to verse 8. So that we'll, it talked about, the, okay, let me read from it. It said, their idols, their idols, their idols are silver and gold, and the work of men's hand. They have mouth, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Nose have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet they have, but they walk not. Neither speak through their truth. Then verse 8. He said, They that make them are like them unto. So is everyone that trusted in them. So what you believe will definitely actually shape in you also. Amen. We, we all came from Africa. We know what um, some uh, belief system has been in Africa also, which kind of alters your mentality. Where even before 1898, Sometime before 1898, it was believed that twins, twins were evil. That they, they did what? They came to kill their mom. And what did they do? Be before 1898, they used to dump triplets, twins, in the evil forest so that they would die. It was Mary Slessor who was a missionary that came to Africa and that changed that mentality. That's a belief system that was passed from generation to generation. Amen. So, under the same experience, we're talking about the development of the brain and the function are affected by the overall health of individuals. So, the brain as it were, science will tell you the brain as it were, kind of like controls the entire body, the, your function and everything. Is it true that some believers also believe that some of these disease conditions, mental, whatever it is, that they've been labeled by Western um, um, education? Yes, it might be true. They, are, they might be demonic, but in the Western world, they are not labeled to be something. So we'll get there and see exactly how all this is raised out. So he said the brain is affected by what the body is exposed to. For example, consumption of unwholesome food and drink. Effect of medication, brown sicknesses. Brown sicknesses, you're talking about contagious diseases, exposure to pollution, such as radiation, poison, gases, affecting mental state of individual. Amen? So this one is very classic. Many of us know the nuclear, the nuclear um, accident that happened in Chernobyl. When it happened over there, it happens in such a way that the radius through which the radiations went into, even kids that were exposed, generation after, all springs of those people had certain genetic predisposition to certain diseases. 
Anywhere a nuclear material is exposed to, grass never grows there anymore. It's entirely done. So now let's talk about food. Let's go to um, Daniel 1 verse 8. So that you see why Daniel, you see the importance of food. How the, what you consume tends to kind of influence what you become. He said, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of, of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Talking about simple, about food. That's just food for you. Amen? So, another one again, he talked about um, Exodus 23, verse 25. Again, talked about what? Food. Exodus 23, Verse 25. He said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take away sickness from a midst of thee. That's food. Let alone medication. There are so many medications that people will take, intoxicant, hallucinogens that people take. It has been said that once you smoke marijuana, your reaction, the time for your reaction has kind of decreased. That's marijuana. And that's the drug that many of us have come to believe, that many people have come to believe that is a magic drug now. When in fact it's a drug that has reduced your reaction time to event. Amen? Amen. So we're talking about, so in, um, so, um, in the, issue, the issue of the, mind, the development of the mind, and the brain has certain things to do with exposure with certain things. They will not talk about alcohol, intoxication. We know what it does with alcoholism. Alcoholism. You could see somebody who is mentally, who is, who is well and drinks alcohol and you just at the twinkle of an eye, he becomes intoxicated and is entirely somebody else. That's the influence of alcohol. Then the next thing again he talked about, the other major um, topic under the um, mental state is emotions. Emotions. Emotions as it were, could be positive, it could be negative, depending on what you see on the actual appearance. Proverbs 17, 22. Talked about it. He said a merry being, cheerful being, is very infectious. It's like a good medicine. Be moody. As he said what? He said he dries the bone. Have you been to a place before where you go into a room, you see expression on people's, the body, the body language and the facial expression. To be able to tell if people are happy or sad. Or you go into a room and see people smiling and you see people smiling. To be able to tell there's something good here. Amen. Amen. So, um, in Genesis 40, 40 verse 6 to 7. Let's open to that verse. Genesis 46, um, 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 chapter 40 verse 6 to 7. This was Joseph. Joseph came into a place. He didn't talk to them. He didn't inquire anything. He looked at them and he said, why are you all dejected? So I'll read. He said, and Joseph came, came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold, they were sad. Just by men looking. Then he now, then, and he asked Pharaoh's uh, officers that were with him in the ward of his lost house, saying, wherefore look ye so sad? today. That was by his male look. His male look. Amen. So emotion. So the Bible also tells us today that emotions, emotions as it were, could be positive or negative. But he said you have the power to determine which you reflect, which you display to people to see or manifest for people to see. Philippians 4.13 is a common verse that we quote every time. He said I can do all things through what? Through Christ who strengthens me. So there are so many people you will see, you will see standing, you see that outward appearance. They stand even if they are facing adversities. Not until he tells you that the baggage he or she is carrying, you will know. When there are some, just little things, you see the expression on their face, you just go there and you know something is wrong here. Amen? That's emotion. So he talked about, he talked about sadness is considered negative because it drains strength and virtue. He said happiness is considered positive because it adds life to one, to one and elevate other. So the next major topic he talked about was hereditary factor. 
It is true there are some genetic, genetic sicknesses or psychiatric sicknesses that arose as a cluster in some families. This might be difficult for us to chew and believe, but that's the simple truth. It might be that the science have studied a lot that we've noticed some genetic things that happen. So even those of us who work in the hospital, we know why we ask family history. There are certain things that you look at somebody, just look at somebody's history, and you begin to imagine, ask if the father or the grandfather or the great grandfather had this or that. So now let's open up to um, let's open up to Genesis one verse eleven to twelve, and you see what the Bible says about what the earth breathes. He said, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the grass brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So now look at the conclusion I said. He went to for and he said, he said, as the earth produces its kind, so do human beings reproduce its kind. Amen. We know that most of all these psychiatric illnesses are due to some excessive, either excessive or deficient neurotransmitters in the brain. In the brain. To some extent, we might think this might be science-related, but God gave us this knowledge. And that is why in Isaiah 33, verse 6, talked about, he said, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your time. It is true that man studied all this stuff and they came into being, but they were knowledge from God. Amen. So the next one he talked about causes. Another major one again is cause. Some of these mental illnesses could arise as a result of cause placed on somebody. It could be by an individual. But now let's take a step back and go back into the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 14, it was entirely blessings. You do this, you get this. You do this, you get it. You are obedient, you get it. that's it. But when you get to verse from verse 15 to the end, it was what disobedience will bring. And one of them was cause. So let somebody open up to Deuteronomy 28, 28. So that you see what, what um, um, cause that God himself will inflict on man. 28, 28. He said the Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. Cause, causes. Then the next one again, he talked about substance abuse. We know this day that many people smoke cigarettes, whatever they smoke, you know, alcohol, you know, drugs and everything, utters mind. We see them on the street. All right? So substance abuse. Amen? So now that we've talked about um, the, mental, the, um, the mental illnesses, now let's quickly talk about the common types that appear, that are very common. The first thing is depression. You talked about depression. Depression is one of the most common we see in the churches and in, in the larger societies. Okay, so the Bible illustrated this test with what? With Hannah. Amen. So let's open up to First Samuel one, verse seven to ten. So now we see that many Christians use refer to this um, First Samuel one seven to ten with Hannah to ref, to explain perseverance or prayers. But then today we are not using the same verse to explain what depression is. Now look at the three people who were involved in this case. Look at Hannah. They look at the husband, Ekana, and they look at Eli, the prince. All of them mention things that they mentioned during that verse. You will see that they are all signs and symptoms of depression. Now, let's see. And he said, and as he did so year by year, when he, she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. And then said Ekana, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thee? And why it is thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better than ten sons? So Anna rose after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple. Now see what happened. A cat was asking the wife, Why don't you eat? Why do you cry? These are all the symptoms that doctors ask patients. Of depression. 
The husband said, am I not important than 10 sons? Now look at the next thing that Eli, Eli said. Eli thought she was drunk. Although that wasn't true. She wasn't drunk. But in the later verse of that um, um, lesson, if you read further, into chapter 15, up to chapter 15, you will see where Anna confessed with her mouth that I am grieved. So today's lesson talked about some of the symptoms that they talked about. They said feeling of guilt, tiredness, lack of interest in usual activities, isolationism, loneliness, loneliness, appetite change, sudden participation in risky behavior, sad mood, and declined cognitive function. Two of them mentioned, three of them that was involved in that conversation mentioned at least two, two, weeping, not eating. Amen. Then the other one we talk about depression was the life of uh, what's it called? Um, the life of Elijah. Life of Elijah. Elijah, after he has defeated what the, 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 the prophets of Baal, Jezebel was after her life. The Bible says she went in, he went into the wilderness. He got there. He kept his servant here and he walked one day further in. And there he cried. What did he tell God? He said, Just keep me. He's tired. Suicidal so ideation. What about Moses? When Moses was overwhelmed with what Israelites were asking for, asking for meat, meat, meat. If you look at it, Moses asked God a barrage of questions. First of all, he was asking God, What have I done to deserve all these people? Am I their parents? Did I conceive them? Just kill me, let me go. So, all those symptoms all fit into depression. Then the next one again, we're talking about that's um, depression. Then the next one again, he talked about the issue of anxiety and fear. Anxiety and fear is very common even in the churches among believers and unbelievers. They are not an exception. What's the issue of anxiety? For you to be anxious over things, then what is about the issue of fear? To fear for the unknown. Is it true that we Africans fear of so many unknowns? We are in a land that does not belong to us. So it's something we have to recognize. It might be too subtle for people to say this is what it is. That is why in a clinical term, they can define it as mind moderate and severe. There are so many people who are walking around with anxiety, fear, and depression. It's not known at all. They don't know it. Even it might be difficult for even doctors to diagnose it. It might be that subtle. So now look at the life of people that, tra that came from Africa or people who are here without any status. You'll be able to wake up in the morning and say with a smile, I'm smiling. But there's something that bonds you. That kind of make you think twice. That you wake up in the morning, you think about in Africa, we think about our parents, what, what to eat, housing, accommodation, everything. We wonder over so many things. Those are all fear and anxiety. What they, they are telling us today is that he said believers are not an exception. So let's quickly open up to Luke 21, Luke 21, verse 26. So now you see how men fright over things that are known. He said, man's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of the heaven shall be shaken. That's exactly the time we are now. Coronavirus, nobody knows anything about it. Nobody knows, has a clue about what is happening. The thing is just raging along the land and nobody knows. So, different hospitals are doing different things. I was talking to a friend in New York yesterday that people were just dying like chicken. So, whatever number you see on the computer is basically the number that they were able to count. is way ahead of that. Way ahead. Nobody knows. This is the trying time where people are afraid of the unseen. Amen? Amen. So, the last one there, alcohol, he talked about alcoholism, substance abuse, and addiction, addictive behavior. So, we know what we talked about alcohol before, substance abuse. These are all things that even occur among Christians. Even there have been so many church leaders who have been destroyed. Their ministry has been destroyed by addiction to porn pornography. So, what's addiction? Anything that takes your time more than usual from the things of God. That's basically, even, even, if, even, if, even if your car, the care of your car takes you time, you are addicted to your car. You are addicted to your car. So is every addiction bad? No. There are some which are, there are, some which are, which are, which are useful. They are very useful. They are very useful because if you are addicted to something that propagates propagate the, 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 the kingdom of God, yes. There are so many people who are addicted to praise. So many people are addicted to church going. So many people are addicted to worship. So many people are addicted to what? Tithing. 
Amen? Amen. So in conclusion, he's talking about, he said, maintain your mental well-being by what you feed your mind, body, what you feed your mind and body. So I will close this um, um, class with Romans 12, 1 to 2. Let's quickly just read that. Romans 12, 1 to 2. He said, maintain your mental well-being by what you feed your mind and body with. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Is a, is a verse, is a, a, a verse that we all know. He said, I beseech you, dear of brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable what? Service. Step on part. And he said, be not conformed to this word, but ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? So in conclusion, there are so many things that the word, the word has a replica of what, the word has a replica for everything that God wants you to be. So the question again is that, what do you feed your mind with? Amen? Amen. Do you have any questions? No? Okay. So how could we say short prayer? On my channel, channel God, we thank you for that for your word that we have heard today. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Father, open our hearts, open our minds, let the Holy Spirit teach us and explain to us that which we have covered and yet more we are unable to cover. Thank you, Father, for your grace. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we please rise for worship? We thank God for his faithfulness. We thank him for his loving kindness. We thank him for such a day as this. Not many are fortunate to see this. And it's not because of what we do or what we know. And not because of our righteousness, but it's because of his grace and mercy. So wherever you are this moment, if you have tuned in on the internet, whether Facebook, YouTube, I just want you to lift your hands wherever you are and begin to ascribe glory unto the name of the Lord. Just come to the living room with your children and come and exhort the Lord together with us. He is a faithful God. One merciful God, a God so unchanging, a God we run to in time of trouble, the only one who lifts us up when we fall. Just give him glory, just ascribe glory unto his name. He is a faithful God, he is worthy of our praise, he is worthy of our worship. Just exhort his name. Just exhort his name. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The only one who was and is and is to come. The only one who will come again to judge the living and the dead. Just give him glory. The one who ascended into the heavens after the third day in the tomb. He is seated at the right hand side of God the Father. Just give him glory this morning. Just exalt him. We worship you. We worship you. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you alone. You are worthy of our praise. You
to worship you I live the earth and lifting up your name I live the earth to honor you who is the like you You. Who is that like you? Who is that like you? No one above you, no one beside you. I say, who is that like you? Who is that like you? Nobody, Lord, no one beside you. I say, who is that like you, Lord? Who is that like you? I live the earth, I live, I live the earth to worship you and you and you and you and Lord. Oh, I live the earth to worship you. I say, who is that like you? Who is that like you? No one besides you. No I live the I live I live the to worship you. throne worship at your feet we bow before your throne you are the glorious God we bow bow before your throne we worship worship at your feet we bow, bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. We bow, bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. we bow, bow before your throne. Oh, you are the glory.
مجلس ہوا ہے ہمارے فرچیز ایسیو نے بچے Just worship the name of the Lord. Give him worship, somebody. Just open your mouth and begin to exalt the name of the Lord. The king who reigns in righteousness, just exalt him. Who are we that he should be mindful of us? Just exalt him this morning. If he has woken you up this morning, then he has a good purpose for you, somebody. Just open your mouth wherever you are and worship this God. Amazing God. Faithful God. Just worship him. Be thou exalted, O God. You who ten thousands of angels bow down before your throne and cry out holy. All things were created for you through you and by your will they exist, O God. We say praise be unto your glorious name which is exalted above all blessing and praise. Hallelujah. Let's begin to worship the Lord. Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Begin to thank Him for making you to be alive. Worship Him with your praise and worship. Let's begin to say, Lord, you are worthy. Father, you are worthy. Let's begin to thank Him. Is the hour of prayer? Is the hour of prayer? Let's begin to thank Him. Begin to thank Him for His sustenance. Begin to thank Him for the opportunity that He has given you to be alive today. Begin to thank Him because you are over the ground. You are not under the ground. Begin to thank Him because you are not sick. Begin to thank him because you are not in jail. Begin to thank him because you are not homeless. Begin to thank him because you are not naked. Begin to thank him because you are not homeless. We are not teasing those that have this situation, but we are giving God the grace. We are not different of people that are in this situation. We are not mocking them. We are not laughing them. But God has made you and I to not be in that position. So we need to show a sense of gratitude. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You are worthy. You are holy. You are faithful. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your favors. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your sustenance. Because you are my defender. You are my sheep. You are my protector. You are my sustenance. You are my joy. You you are my help. Thank you because you have protected me. You have made me to see another week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. On behalf of my household, I worship you. On behalf of my family, I worship you. On behalf of this country, I worship you. On behalf of this city, I worship you. On behalf of this land, Lord, I say thank you. Thank you for your protection. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. 
Open with me quickly, wherever you are watching us, to the book of 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is our prayer. 2 Chronicles 7.14. There are three parts of that Bible verse. 2 Chronicles 7.14. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What did he say? Then I will hear from heaven. Let's begin to ask God for every inadequacies, every way that we have missed it up to this period. In any way, in any form, in words that we said, in words that we didn't say, in our actions, in our inactions, in not fellowshipping with each other, in not being kind to one brother or sister, in not sharing what you have with a brother or sister, in not being prayerful. Is it our sin that is making us to go through what we are going right now? We don't know. But let's ask to begin to humble ourselves. Let's begin to confess our sins. Let's begin to ask God for mercy. Let's begin to ask God for protection. Let's begin to say, Lord, we are sorry. Lord, we are sorry for any in and every inadequacies, for anything that I have done wrong, but not sharing with my fellow human being, but not being kind to my co-worker, my neighbor, my friends, but not being kind to them, by not being ministered to somebody, by not praying for the sake. Lord, me, I'm sorry. Lord, let's begin to ask for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The other person says, let me start again from 14. He said, then if my people who are called by my name are sorry for what they have done, if they pray and obey me and stop their evil ways, I will hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Let's begin to pray. We all know what is going on in our land right now. I don't care where you are in the world, where you are watching us. You know, this is affecting our land. Let's begin to say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy and heal our land. Lord, in your wrath, have mercy and heal our land. Because I know the God we serve is bigger than any giant. Is bigger than any coronavirus. Is bigger than any evil. Is bigger than any infirmity is bigger than any sickness. The God you and I serve, the God who and I serve, he can heal our land. What the scientists cannot do, what medicine cannot do, God can do it. Anything that is posing as a giant, God is bigger than any giant. He has never failed. He will not fail us at this time. He will never fail. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is unchangeable God. Is an unchangeable God. His power there is there. Let me go say, Lord, heal our land. Father, heal our land. Father, heal our land. Father, heal our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And heal our land. Lord, have mercy. And heal our land. Father, have mercy. And remove this plague that is covering our land. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Let's begin to remember all those people that are money this time. All those people that have been affected. Every family that has been affected by the death of one Lord or the other. We are supposed to be our brother's keeper. Let's begin to ask for the comfort of the Holy Spirit to comfort them even as they grieve right now. Father we stand in the gap for all our brothers and sisters all over the world. And we say, Lord, we ask those that are money that are grieving at this time, that you will send your comforter unto them. Father, comfort the comfortless in the name of Jesus. Comfort the comfortless. Show yourself mighty at this time in their life in the name of Jesus. Uphold them, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus, mighty 
mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's begin for pray for all those that are sick, those that are being quarantined in their home, self quarantine, those that are on the hospital bed, in the nursing home, wherever they are. Let's begin to speak healing. We just celebrated the risen Christ. Our God is alive. Jesus Christ is alive. Let's begin to pray that they will be healed in the name of Jesus. The Bible reminds us by, by the stripe Jesus born on the cross, we are healed. We are healed. Everyone that is sick right now, we speak unto healing unto you. Wherever you are on your sick bed, wherever you are, where you are quarantined, we speak healing unto you. We say you are healed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is meeting at the measure of the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue, every sickness shall bow in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus mighty name we pray. Let's begin to pray for all essential workers, all those that are out there in the forefront of this war. Let's begin to remember them, the nurses, medical, paramedical staff, firefighters, police, security, the garbage man, the main man, everyone, the grocery store workers. Let's begin to say the Lord will uphold them. The Lord will protect them. The Lord will have make a banner over them. The Lord will shield them. Even as they sacrifice to be at the forefront, that they will not be sick. Brother, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. These are, let's begin to pray. These are the people that are the fighters at the forefront of this war. If you don't know it, this is a war. These are the people at the forefront of the battle. Let's begin to ask that the fire of the Holy Spirit will cover them. That the Holy Ghost will surround them. We protect them. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we just want to bless you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Because the Bible reminds us that there is nothing that happens unknown to you. Thank you for what we are going through right now. Because we know we will come out of it stronger in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we pray if it is our inadequacies that is causing this. We ask, Lord, that you temper your rod with mercy in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak healing unto those people that are sick. We say, Lord, you will heal them in the name of Jesus. And you will protect each and every one of us. You will heal our land in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I send sincere greetings to all our brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever you might be Columbus, Ohio, Westerville, uh, Delaware, or all other parts of the world. Nigeria, Great Britain. We pray that the Lord will put an end to this plague in Jesus' mighty name. Um, as we've always been doing, we shall continue to streamline our services every Sunday from 10 o'clock. To 10:30, will be uh, be, um, will be the uh, time for uh, Sunday school, and 10:30 to 11:30 will be our main service. Continue to watch us either on the Facebook RCC Abundant Live, or on YouTube RCCG Abundant Live OH. Subscribe to our channel, share with your friends and families. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. Um, we all know that the bills are still coming in. Therefore, your financial support is still very much needed. Um, you can always give either on PayPal, RCCG, Abundant Life OH at Yahoo.com, phone 614 8930 or as we've been saying before, give Lify app site for RCCG Abundant Life Chapel. Also, you can send your checks to RCCG Abundant Life Chapel, PO Box 
8665 Columbus, Ohio, or 5885 Cleveland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43231. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. We still want to give an advice on how to keep ourselves healthy. Since there's no cure for coronavirus yet, the best thing is to prevent it. Therefore, continue practicing social distancing. Make sure you're at least six feet away from the next person to you when and if you have to go to the stores or go to the pharmacy to collect your medications. And um, avoid large events and gatherings. Wash your hands as many times as you can, particularly when you have touched things which is not the usual thing. Either you've taken in your meals, wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds. Cover your mouth and nose with uh, tissues when you have to cough or cough into your elbow. Also, avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. And clean and disinfect the places in your house that has um, a higher incidence of people going in or out. And if possible, for the meantime, don't welcome guests into your house. Allow people only who live in your house to be in your house. That is just a good way to maintain um, a good uh, sense of cleanliness. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Although there's a ban of gathering for more than 10 people, even churches are affected, but let's make sure that this does not affect our reading the word of God and our praying together. The church building is locked, but we are the church. Wherever you are in your house, pray, read the Bible, and worship God. The very gates of hell or coronavirus will not stand against us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I'm happy to announce to you that we have a big bouncing baby boy added to the Abundant Life family. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Sister C.J. Teneng, the church secretary, gave birth to a bouncing baby boy last Monday. That's the wife of taking Dean Teneng. Please call them to rejoice with them. Sister C.J. is on phone 1-404-955-6948. And Deacon Dean is on phone one 806 471 4749. It's time for offering. Write your checks. Hold your whatever you want to send to the church. Hold it up and let us pray over it. Psalm 96, verse 8. Psalm 96, verse 8. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto him. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Raise up your offering, which you have brought, which you are going to send into his house, and pray. Pray over it. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity I have given your children to give unto you. Father, you love us so much, you sent your only begotten son. Father, out of the much you have given us, we, have, we are sending this token unto you. Lord, we pray this will be used to destroy the kingdom of Satan in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, because your children are brought unto you, are sending unto you, Lord, I pray, Lord, Father, you devour the, the, rebuke the devourer for their sake in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick, Lord, heal them today. We are the chief physician of heaven and earth, and with you everything is possible. Lord, we pray for all those who have lost their beloved ones during this plague, Lord, I pray you will console them, you will comfort them. And then, Holy Father, let the glory continue to be yours, and let the blessings continue to be those of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
this is uh, the time to share the word of God to worship him to praise him the Bible say that in all things that we should give him thanks irrespective of the occurrences whatever that is happening the word of God made us to understand that Though we are in the world, we are not part. Everything that the enemy have put in place, we are sure by the power in the name of Jesus that hell shall be dismantled. Let us raise our hands and worship. Let us worship him. Let us thank him for the gift of life. Let us adore him because he is the great I am. He is our father. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the one that speaks and stands by his words. He is the one that is called the unchangeable God. He is Jehovah. Let us worship him, give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, adore him. Appreciate his kindness. Appreciate his goodness. Everything that we're enjoying is just gifts that he has given unto us. We deserve none. We deserve none. The air we breathe, the food we eat, the good health we enjoy. Even when our body tends to fail at times, the quickening of our body by the Holy Spirit, we give Him thanks. We praise the Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. At this month, we are considering a very important topic. The theme of the month is uh, It is Time for Revival. This topic is timely. It is, it is as the Lord wants it to be. But I want to tell us that we should not be terrified. We should not be shaken. It is time for us to go back. It is time for us to look back. It is, it is time that calls for remorseful and purposeful thinking. It is time for us to reason deep. I was asking somebody the other day, I said, who do you think controls the world? This time is not the time to to, to think that the, the what they call it, you know, plague. A lot of people have turned to scientists. They give names, they define things. But remember that there is nothing on earth that is happening that has never been recorded in the scriptures. Everything is in the Bible. Nothing takes God unawares. Nothing. Even when men are planning mischievously to dethrone the act and the power of God. God is mindful of all these things. The Bible in the book of Psalms says God is sitting and having them in derision. I was, how many of us know that God laughs? God used to laugh at the stupidity of men. God laughs at the stupidity of men. This is the time for revival. You know, we, we, we tend not to worship God. We tend not to know who God is. How can you worship who you don't know or what you don't know? The God we worship is that God that never loses any battle. No matter how the enemy presents it. No matter. This is not the first time where the, the world is seeing plague all diseases. But God always triumph. The children of God always triumph. I 
I want to encourage us, children of God, let us not panic. This is not time for panicking. It is time for us to go back and be on our knees and talk to our God. Somebody was asking me, he said, pray for the whole world. I said, I'm not praying for the whole world. I know people that I pray for. The Bible encouraged me to pray for the body of Christ. Pray for the saints. I'm not the whole world. People that are destined to die will die. If you are a child of God, you cannot listen. Nobody as a child of God should be afraid of death. You should not fear death. At any point it comes good and fine. But the thing is, you should know, you should know who you have believed. Paul was talking to Timothy in second place. He said, I know who I have believed. You can only panic when you don't know who you have believed. You will panic when you are not in the right standing with God. This is time for revival. The word revival in Hebrew is just shaha. They call it they say shaha. Just revival, restoration. To be restored to the original state. To be restored. So the revival we are talking about is restoration. Let us come back to God. We have served a lot of things. People, listen, some people even serve themselves. They turn themselves to God. They, they turn their educational qualification to their God. They turn their possessions. Something that God has blessed them with. They worship those things. God is saying no. It is me, the giver, that you have to worship. Even in this time, you should know that it is repentance before revival. Let us repent of our evil ways. Let us repent. In that first Samuel chapter 7, 3 and, uh, 3 and 4. First Samuel 7, verses 3 and 4. You see it there. It's not like the children of Israel never knew God. It's not like they don't know that God exists and God is powerful. It is God that has led them through desert. It has led them through difficult times. He has sustained them. He has supplied all their needs. But that did not stop them to make small goals for themselves. Imagine the stupidity of man. Somebody will have a cabin. You put it somewhere and you will be worshipping it. Something you made by your own hand. The man of God turned to them and said, No, this is the time that you have to put this thing away. And let us turn to God, our Creator. Leave the Asherah, leave the bars. Leave them. Let us come to God in worship, in repentance. We have sinned. We have seen. You see, this time, it's time that we, we, we should we should take stock. All this while, have we been doing it right? In what ways have we gotten it wrong? And we'll make the necessary corrections and move ahead. I keep telling people that nothing, nothing on earth can stop the church of God. Nothing. After this time, the church of God will bounce back stronger. Stronger than ever before. Stronger than ever before. But all we have to do as children of God is, listen, I was telling them, what is all this about? What is everything? Let us read our scriptures. The people of the earth, they are planning their own, but God has his own plan. Whether they're eminent, one word, one word order. They want everything to be one. They want everything to, to, to be channeled from one source. Okay, now, you said that people in the earth, they are too much. 
they would have world population is too much. God is never complaining. Has God complained to you? Has God complained to you that the air that he supplied to the earth cannot, every, cannot go round? God never complained to you to shorten the human race. God never made you a, a God. God never asked you to help him to shape mankind, to tell mankind the, the number that's supposed to be on earth. God never gave you that mandate. The people of the world, you say the world population is too much, you want to reduce them. Why don't you reduce them from your household? The enemies of God must perish. People that do not want the children of God to worship God in, in, in comfort, in peace, must be destroyed. The enemy has been fighting. Listen, it was God. I mean, if not for God, the enemy, see, for you to hold a whole God in, in, the, in the person of Jesus Christ and crucify him, and take victory. They were rejoicing when they were crucifying Christ. But they never knew. <laughs> they never knew that that is even God at work to redeem his own. We just finished celebrating Easter. We rejoiced even at our homes. We ate. We praised God. Because the word alone that Jesus gave at the end, he said, It is finished. It is finished. Calamities, tragedies, worries, everything. It is finished. He conquered all. He conquered all. He gave us victory. He conquered all. He handed unto us victory. He said, even when he was going, he said, fear not. He said, I will be with you till the end of time. I will be with you. Why don't we trust God? He said, I will be with you till the end of the times. Are these things are happening? People are talking second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus will come, but it is in the hands of the church to pray back Jesus. It is the church that will pray Jesus back. It is by our prayers. It's not the world. Everything the world is doing, they are just doing it because the Bible even called those activities and people that will be presenting them as antichrist. They are not for Christ. It's only the church that is for Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is only by the preparedness of the church that will make Christ to come. Every other thing that is happening, the the, the the earthquakes, the, the walls, everything. Those are the things that are leading. He said, those are the signs. We are seeing them. This is where it's leading to. At the end, the church of God will be glorified with our Father. Do not allow your heart to be troubled. Do not be terrified by everything. Listen, the word of it is, it is, I was asking somebody the other day, I said, Listen, the, the viruses, the, the plagues, the sicknesses that is what, but, but the human body has what they call immune system. But as a child of God, God now bring you out and give you another immune system in the person of the Holy Spirit. I was telling somebody, even if we gather in this church, Abundant Life Chapel, let every congregant come to church, nobody will contract any virus. It's not possible. It's not possible. The atmosphere alone that is charged with the Spirit of God will swallow. What, what, what is it? And if you are a child of God, you are sick and you are listening to my voice, you are healed. It is the Word of God that gives you healing. The power is in the world. Not in any verse. Not which verse. It's in the word of God. The power is in the presence of God. It is the spirit of God that gives healing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was telling somebody... Like the man of God said in 2 Kings 1.16 
when the king was terrified he was looking for a solution he was even going to another god they were sending going to other things to seek for god he said is there no god in israel is it because there is no god in israel that make you to be looking for solution elsewhere and i asked the children of god why are you panicking is there no god in you why panicking is there no god in you is there no god in you the word of god said that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world greater is he that is in you the spirit of god in you can never allow any virus to cut your life short it's not possible only believe that god is able to save his own only believe have confidence in god have trust in god worship god but when we are worshiping and having all this confidence it does not make us foolish it does not say uh, go and uh, you don't tempt god i was telling somebody it's not you know i know that no virus will kill me but that does not mean that i will now go to where <laughs> I, I, I will be sensible praise the lord i will not use my hand to do myself but peradventure I'm on my way and come in contact with any this thing. The power of God in me will drive the sickness away. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is different because I know that no virus will kill me. I will go use my hand and take the virus. I, no. But when I know that it will not kill me, it's when I'm going on my own. Come, I will be on my own. I will be on my lane. And no harm shall come our way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus time for revival time for revival it is time for us to sit back and think remember that Jesus told them as he was going he said stay at the upper room amen he said stay at the upper room wait it was Pentecost people were there celebrating as a child of God, we should know. A lot of things happen in the church. I, 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 even in the body of Christ, I, I keep wondering. It's supposed not to be so. Amen. Time for revival is not time for carnival. The church have entertained a lot of carnival. We have taken part in a lot of carnivals. Turn the house of God to a place of partying. It ought not to be so. Somebody was practicing. They say you are celebrating your birthday. You are doing this thing. You call a comedian to the altar of God and was cracking jokes. A comedian in the pulpit using the microphone the man of God is using to preach. Making fun. Even using the man of God and the body of Christ to crack jokes. It ought not to be so. The house of God is a sacred place. It's a place where we worship God. You say you want to relieve tension. You want to no. The best place to relieve tension is in the house of God. When you sing praises, you dance unto the Lord, the, the tension will go, depression will leave you. But not when you turn the house of God as a place of jamboree. God is calling for revival, not for carnival. We have played enough. We have joked enough. Nobody is going to perish. As far as you have confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior. We have said 316. John 316. Everybody, you know, everybody recite it. John 316. Are you reciting it without knowing what it says? Without knowing the meaning of John 3.16? You say the word of God, you know that the word of God is not to be taken for jokes. God will serve it, does not entertain. God is not a joker. He does not entertain jokes. He's a serious-minded God. We can't reduce God to 
to an entertainer. Amen. We can't reduce God to an entertainer. I was watching on the TV the other day. The person was giving someone. It was uh, the, the other person was by the side. He said, "Man, prof, prophesy." Church has come to a place that you go to, uh, you accept people to prophesy. He said, "Prophesy, man of God, prophesy, prophesy." That is not what the Bible said. You are out of the scriptures. It is time to direct people to God. It is time for you to bring to tell people the works of God. The works of God. The love of God. That was why at the day of Pentecost, what first came, it was wind. Wind came to drive away every heart of hardness, every hard heartedness, to drive away every darkness. After the wind, the word of God said that the, the, the spirit of God now came upon them. Because they have tarried. They were never part of the Pentecost. They were never part of people that were celebrating in the streets. They were not rejoicing. They were not dancing. They were waiting on to God for the promise of God to come to pass in their lives. We have been too lukewarm too casual about the things of God. Too casual. We have become too familiar with God. Too familiar. We, we, we do the things of God with, with levity. We, you don't care. With no fear of God. No one reference God again. No reference. You revere God. No one, to, even when, when you pray, you pray to God as if you, you are talking to your mate. It is time for us to come back and correct ourselves. Every man, every woman of God that knows who God is in his life will give one or two testimonies where God at the time have saved him or her. Our God is still in the business of saving his people. No matter the attack. No matter where the arrow is coming from. Because the word of God is no weapon is, that is fashioned against you that will prosper. No matter where it's coming from. It must go back to sender. This is time for us to re remove the clothes of pride and humble ourselves before our God. It is time to humble ourselves. We are humbling ourselves not because we are afraid of the terror that people are perpetrating over, uh, in the streets, in the world. But we, we, we are referencing our God because He is all-knowing and he is all powerful and he knows all things you make yourself ready for rapture because when Christ comes Christ, Christ is not coming for the whole world he is coming for his own church to rapture his own people the ones that have believed in his name the ones that have worshipped him in truth and in righteousness not in pretense Christ is coming. The way, the way the whole thing is going, it, listen, the church of God must become more serious. I was telling somebody the other day, see, what it has become, even when they were planning this thing, if they have known, nobody, like, are we, not, are we not preaching the gospel now? The gospel is being preached. Nothing can stop the gospel. Listen, we, 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 are, we are even, some of us are very fortunate. We are carrying the whole Bible. I was in Dubai, somebody that was telling me that he's a Christian. What gave him happiness was that he has a sheet of the Bible. Just a sheet of the Bible. That was what he brought out from. If you see where he hid it in the, in the belt, he used the belt and hid it. 
You have to bring it to prove to me that he is a Christian. You have to bring it a, a piece of the Bible. Peace. Just one piece. Nothing can stop the gospel. Nothing. It is time for us to sit back. It is time for us to relax. It is time for us to appreciate God. It is time for us to remove pride, worldliness, carnality from our lives. Let us be, let us be heaven bound. Prepared at all times. Like the motto of the Boy Scout will say. He said, be prepared. Be prepared at all times. Amen. Amen. Be prepared. Nothing happened. Listen, it depends on what you say. It is what you say as a child of God. That is what will happen. At times of difficulties, even Esther, a woman, it was, it was illegal. It's not constitutional for, him, for her to seek the face of the, the, the king at that moment. She decreed that if I die, I die. When she got there, she got what she wanted and she never died because God was with her. Let us make a declaration and stand and have confidence in the God we serve. The prayer we make, what we say in prayer matters a lot. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, do you know that if Samson had prayed correctly, he would have been saved. He would have come alive. Come out alive. If he had prayed correctly. But he said, God, this time, oh, let, me, let me die with my enemies. I said, no. If he had prayed that this time, let me destroy them. But, but God, restore my sight and save me. God would have done that. The word of God said that what I hear you say is what I will do. Let us know how to direct our prayers. The words we use in our prayers. Let us know who we believe. First of all, we condemn ourselves before even coming to the presence of God. Before asking God for what we need. You already condemn yourselves. How do you now stand before God? It depends on who you know. How do you know your God? Do you know God? In what form? How do you know your God? Let God reveal himself to you. And as he revealed himself to you, take him for who he is. And know that with God, all things are possible. All of us, nothing will stop us from making heaven. The devil cannot even do it. It's not in his powers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us wave our hands. Let's worship him. Say, God, I have heard your words. And I have known that nothing is more powerful than you. You are all powerful. It is your purpose that will happen. No plan of the enemy will prevail against your plans. It is you that holds the world with your own hands. You control all things by your power. You are God. You don't need any man to be God. You are God all by yourself. You sustain everything by your power and by your majesty. You don't need any decree. You don't need any, any man to help you. You are all powerful God. Father, we thank you. We reference you. Nothing, not the terror. Nothing will, nothing will separate us from your love. Nothing will separate us from your presence. Nothing will separate us from knowing who you are and abiding by your rules and by your principles and your ordinances as it is in the scriptures. We hold on to your word that you say fear not and we, we say we are not afraid no matter what the enemy is doing. We are confident in our God. And in the name of our God, we are doing violently. We are doing triumphantly. We are praising our God and we are pushing the kingdom of our God. We are preparing the kingdom and we are preparing for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing shall debar us from seeing 
the glory of our God. So shall it be in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church say, Amen. thank God for the message that we have heard today. We pray that the message will not stand against us at the end of our time in the name of Jesus Christ. The word we do that which God has sent it to do in our individual lives, in our individual families and in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, to him alone be the glory. In the name of Jesus. I just want to encourage you, children of the living God. Our God is faithful. He is the almighty. Nothing changes that. I want you to remain strong in your faith. Continue seeking the face of the Lord. Continue reading the word. That is the only way of escape. And definitely, assuredly, we shall all come out strong out of this difficult time in the name of Jesus. For you, children of the living God, I know you are listening online at this time. If you did not receive the stimulus package from the government, please call me. The Lord is able and he will do that which he has promised to do in your lives in the name of Jesus. To God be the glory, this past week, God did great and mighty things in our midst. As we have heard during the announcement, we had a bouncing baby boy on Monday to the glory of God Almighty, to the Tenet family. And our own Deacon Nolabode here, he bagged his PhD on Monday as well. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. While others are saying there's a casting down, how oh, we are saying there's a lifting up. To him alone be the glory forevermore. And as a family, I want you to continue to pray for the two of them. These two families. I want you to call them. Your own time will come. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you. For what you are doing in our midst, Lord, we want to say thank you. Take all the glory. And continue to ride on in your majesty. Even in our individual lives. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you even for coming to your presence again today. We thank you that we have always been in your presence and we shall continue to be in your presence. Thank you because we remain our God and our fortress, our healer and our sustainer all the days of our life. Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you for the word that you have sent to each and every one of us today, O oh God. Lord, we pray that you are appearing. This word will not stand against us in the name of Jesus. Father, peradventure you come today. Lord, we ask in your infinite mercies, take us with you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit our lives unto your hand afresh. Ride on in your majesty. In the name of Jesus Christ. There will not be any evil breaking news. Even from this tabernacle. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will continually be our God. Our strength. Our father. Our sustainer. Our great shepherd. In the name of Jesus. Father we just want to thank you. We want to glory that we have a God like you so dependable, so reliable Father take all the glory in the name of Jesus Lord concerning all our children 
wherever they are we play the blood of jesus christ upon them we ask that your blood will speak great and mighty things on our behalf in the name of jesus none of them shall be sick none of them shall be admitted in the hospital only great signs and wonders will come from our children in the name of jesus lord we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you take all the glory in jesus name we pray amen let us share the grace together in fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen prophecy of the church we shall not build and another inhabit we shall not plant and another eat for as the days of the tree are the days of my people and my lecture enjoy the work of their hands we shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble for we are the seed of the blessed of the lord and our offspring with us and it shall come to pass that before we call the lord we answer and while we are yet speaking the lord we hear the lord we hear you the Lord will be merciful unto you. The Lord will be gracious unto you. He will jealously watch your going out and your coming in all the days of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in peace and God of the redeemed Christian Church of God will go with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen.